Hi and welcome to Barely Homesteading. Today we're going to be talking about preserving pumpkins. So when we moved out of the homestead, we did not have time to process all of our pumpkins. We left them in the ground until uh, the earliest frost, pulled them up, pretty much packed them straight. We just didn't have time to um, bottle them and my pressure canner was already packed and most of my bottles were already packed. So fortunately gourds are very, uh, they store really, really well. And so we just packed them all up in crates so they had a little bit of airflow and wouldn't mold and brought them to my parents' house. Now my parents happen to have a freeze dryer so we are going to try freeze drying pumpkins. We have never done this before, so it will be an experiment. Stick around, you may see something go wrong. By the way, it was all my idea. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna start a little bit like we would if we were going to bottle them. We are cutting up the pumpkins. Um, we're gonna clean out all the goo inside. We're gonna cut them into slices, and then we're gonna peel the rinds. So we're gonna get started on that. So this is something that all the kids can help with. They're all helping. We are saving some of the seeds for planting next year or when we get a garden again. What about to yummy eat? pumpkin seeds that we make? Uh, we don't make yummy pumpkin seeds. We always save them to replant them. Wait, what about this? Oh, we eat pumpkin seeds. Yeah, what about the seeds we eat? Is that okay, we don't... Seeds? I haven't really ever made pumpkin seeds for you to eat. Look at my hands! Someone look at my hands! The gooey! They are gooey. So we are saving some of the seeds. We just pull out what we can. We'll dry them, wash them and dry them afterwards. And then we clean out the goo, which it's... Baby Bear is demonstrating how to do it with your hands. Sporty Bear is showing how to use it with a spoon. You can just scoop it out. And I've also actually used a peeler and just kind of peel the inside ah. of the squash. That Ew. actually works better if you've used a spoon Ew. to remove some of the uh, the guts Ew. first. Squash. My squash or pumpkin, whatever you're doing. So we're gonna get to work on that. Uh, this is... Mommy, this is gooey. It is gooey. I can't oh. eat my. All right, so we've done, we're done with the cleaning out the flesh and the uh, peeling of the pumpkins, and now we are preparing them to go in the freeze dryer. We're going to try three different methods just because I don't know what's gonna work best. This is our first time. So I took some raw pumpkins and I blended them up in our food processor um, into just this kind of mush. And because they were raw, it's like very fine, small chunks, but it's not quite the mush that you get out of a can when you are um, opening up a can of pumpkin puree. So I also have some that I am boiling and that we will um, blend up to make that mush like we would get out of the can. The third way we're gonna try this is we are going to do some pumpkin chips. I cut them fairly thin, maybe a quarter of an inch, and I tried to make them as uniform as possible so they will all dry at the same time and we're just gonna spread some of these out on the trays and then we'll have some options to work with and see what we like best. All right, so here we are at the freeze dryer. We have two trays of the, um, the pumpkin chips that we did. We'll see how those turn out. We have one full tray of what we cooked and then mashed and it looks a lot like what you would get out of a can of pumpkin puree from the store. And then we have one tray of the one that was raw that I pulsed in my food processor. And it looks a little bit like uh, riced cauliflower. A little bit chunky still, but very small chunks. And so we'll just kind of see what they each turn out to be and what we can do with them and how they taste and turn out and 
how easy they are to cook with. We're just experimenting. So I have been doing this under the supervision of people who actually have used this before and know what they are doing. So all right, and then we'll we'll give it a try. So everything is out of the freeze dryer. This was um, the puree that we had mixed up into just, you know, kind of mush. And it is now kind of like, looks like little bits of insulating foam. Uh, we broke it up into these little pieces. Now, when we got this out of the freeze dryer, there was some of it that I had not spread thin enough, or I didn't spread it evenly, and there was a thicker spot that did not dry all the way, and we had to tear that out. Uh, we couldn't preserve that. And in fact, we left some of it in this cup, and you can see it's actually starting to mold after a week. So you really need to make sure that you get it uh, spread evenly or maybe a little thinner than I did. Maybe, you know, it's kind of a quarter of an inch uh, evenly throughout to make sure that all of it dries. Now this is what we cut up, just cut up into chunks and put in raw. And it also looks like a little piece of foam. Now supposedly these you can just drop into a soup and they rehydrate while the soup is cooking and they do just fine. Now over here, this is the one that we um, put the raw ones in a food processor and just kind of chopped up. And it looked like kind of like riced cauliflower and it still just looks like lots of little you know, just like little tiny little cut up pieces. Whereas the puree kind of all formed into one big lump. So now we're gonna try reheating these and see what happens. All right, we're gonna pour in just a little bit of water. I don't have much of this uh, one that we had just blended up raw. And as I'm mixing it, it's still staying in chunks. It's not just making a puree on its own. So it was easier to prepare to go into the freeze dryer because I didn't have to end up cooking it. And maybe if I rehydrate it and leave it all the way and kind of mash it up with a spoon, it will turn into a puree. But the puree was definitely... Well, we'll have rehydrate the puree first. But this is still a little bit chunky, so it might need more work at this end of it. So it might be easier to put it in a puree before you put it in the freeze dryer, depending on what you want. Now, all right, so this is the puree. We're gonna see if this just kind of goes back into a nice mush like you would get out of a can. And it is. Oh, wow. It's just instantly a nice little mush like we would use for, um, you know, making pumpkin pie or pumpkin muffins or whatever. This is actually pretty cool. It just immediately, very, very quickly formed this mush that would be very easy to just throw in a recipe. Whereas this other one is still kind of chunky. So the puree took more time to prepare up front because it had to boil all the pieces first and puree it. Um, but this is going to take more work to get into something usable now. If it is, because it's still just like little chunks. I'd have to maybe blend it all up now. So as far as, as far as that goes for me, I think it would be easier to do it in a puree, personally, because that's what I use it more as. Now these pieces, um, they still look like foam. We're just gonna, I don't know how long 
if it would be beneficial to let it sit in water for a little while. I mean, it's already starting to get mushy. <gasps> wow. It actually rehydrates decently quickly. Although I don't know in the center. Wow. And it's just like a piece of pumpkin. Now, it's all, it's a, it is a little bit mushy because the consistency has changed. It's not as hard as it was when it was just a raw piece of pumpkin. Now, I didn't cook this beforehand, but it was frozen and dried. And so that will change the consistency. And it is softer as if I had roasted it or cooked it for a little while. But it does maintain its chunk. It's not dissolving into a puree or anything. It is maintaining the chunk. So if you put that in soups, it wouldn't even have to cook that long. It just rehydrates and it's already a nice soft piece of pumpkin. That's really cool. Yeah. Hmm. I'm sure cooking it would help it a little bit because it is still a little tough. But if you had it in hot water, is it rehydrated and let it just cook with the soup? It would, it wouldn't take a whole lot, not like cooking it from scratch from a completely uh, raw state. So this was actually pretty cool. I'm glad that we did this. All right, so just so you can get a better look at the rehydrated, this is the chunk. Rehydrated into a chunk, but a much softer chunk than in its raw state. This is the puree, and you can see it is just a puree. It rehydrated right back into that very quickly. And this, even though it's been sitting here for a minute and I've been kind of trying to push it to see if it will mash up, it doesn't. It's still maintaining its chunky state, just like the big chunk did. But these are just itty bitty. I'd kind of hoped if we could blend them up and then when they rehydrated, they'd turn into a paste, but they, they don't quite. It's still chunky. So for me, for most of our uses, going with the puree would be easiest. Although one of the reasons why we wanted to try chunks was to see if we could make snack foods out of those chunks. Like my kids love the uh, freeze-dried apple slices and things like that. And so we wanted to try some pumpkin slices. So next we're going to take some of these dehydrated pumpkin slices and feed them to the kids and see what they think. All right, so Sporty Bear here is going to be our first victim. And we, what we did is we were wondering if the dried pumpkin chunks are gonna be good snacks like the freeze-dried apples are. So we've got one that's plain here. We're gonna have him just try it and see if that's something he would like to snack on ever or if it's kind of boring. I'm Baby Bear too. You're gonna have a turn in just a minute, Baby Bear. Tastes good. <coughs> would that be something that you would eat like in the car or for a snack in the afternoon um, or no? Yeah. Okay. I would like that. Now, we tried putting one with just a little bit of powdered sugar and cinnamon on it. Cinnamon! So why don't you try that and see if you like that better or not. Chew it all the way. Mmm. Can I see? Um, I actually kind of like it better with the cinnamon sugar. You like it better with the cinnamon Can sugar? I? Yeah. Okay. All right, baby bear, do you want to turn? All righty. Try this. Is it good? Uh, you're going to tell me that. Look at the camera so they can see that wonderful expression. Do you like it, yes or no? Mm-hmm. I like it. You like it? And your first expression was a little uncertain. All right, try the one with the cinnamon and the sugar, okay? What's going to taste good? No, turn around so they can see you. It tastes really good. Tastes really good? Mm hmm Okay. It is Engineer Bear's turn to try the pumpkin. First try the plain freeze-dried pumpkin. Is that something you would have as a snack? Mm, maybe, no. maybe not. No? It's very bland. Okay. Now try the cinnamon one. Can I try the cinnamon too? You already tried the cinnamon one. It's yummy. It's pretty good. 
Is that something you would eat as a snack if we freeze dried some with cinnamon in, on it? Yeah, probably. We may have to put cinnamon on it, but they will voluntarily eat vegetables for snacks. Maybe. Sometimes. All right, so go ahead and try the plain pumpkin first. What do you think? Is that something you would eat as a snack or? Yeah. Sink! Yeah. Try the cinnamon! It's a little bland. That's what uh, Engineer Bear said. Try the cinnamon, sh the cinnamon ones. I like cinnamon. You like that? Yeah, I think I might like this one better because it has kind of on it. Has a little flavor to it? Yeah, it's definitely not as bland as the plain. Okay. Not something you would snack on? Mmm. Maybe. I feel like this one I could snack on better. I don't know why. Okay. Well, thanks for coming along on our first freeze drying journey ever. We'll, uh, see what the future of the pumpkins are and if we decide to do some more of the chunks with cinnamon or if we just end up uh, pureeing them all for future use in um, other things. So for now, this is Mama Bear saying thanks for coming along. Use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without.